Is it Renekton for a ball just so we can continue to bully his matchup? Like, I'm curious no. that they removed a champion high just played. This is going to be a very telling first pick. There's always the chance they could do something like an Elise because Meteos has still just spammed Elise this entire yeah. time. Fifth Elise game in a row in these playoffs. I'm surprised that they even had to first pick it though. Like, TSM didn't seem to show priority on removing that champion whatsoever, but just to be safe to say, yep, let's get Meteos on the most comfortable champion he's got. I think this actually shows that their ban phase is fairly well targeted and they do not respect Dyrus's ability to play Jax right now. Yeah. I think that's basically what they're saying. And the comfort pick is what's first pick there. I actually don't think it was that big of a priority for them. So they picked Elise. Okay. Comes through. It's going to be safe. Cloud9 can take their time with the rest of these champions. It seems like the rest of the pool isn't even that contested. Bjergsen had the option and he went for Karma. Even with Lulu there, he said, no, this is what I'd rather go for and I was happy to play it. The AD carries, right? Graves versus Corky. Both times. Yeah. Walter was happy to just play Corky, then Corky again. Sneaky was like, it's fine. I've got backups. Supports also picking different things. They let Expedial have Thrash. It wasn't a problem. Now it is going to get stolen away. Okay, yeah. so one final adaptation. Solomid back to the Renekton. If he doesn't get camped, he's likely to win lane. And Graves for Wild Turtle. So a nice move there, I feel like, for TSM. I do not think it's time for them to do incredibly drastic things and do something they've never played before. Even though they kind of did that once in the playoffs already, picking Karma against CLG. But they pulled from that pool a little too many times here. Bjergsen's Karma in the last two games, while moderately effective, was not enough for them to carry the game. And they're not drastically switching up, but maybe even TSM going even farther back into their standard play might be what this calls for. Well, Cloud9 opting right into the same things time. And again, the Jax top lane, he's fine to play it. The Morgana here for support, third time in a row on this one for Elimination. Mm -hmm. C9 not forced to do almost anything different. And I feel like Cloud9 does the little things in Champ Select correct as well. Notice how in that last moment, they didn't hover over any champions. And then when they were ready to lock Jax Morgana, they picked them immediately and locked them, giving the smallest amount of time possible for TSM to respond to those picks. It's an underrated thing in Champ Select, not hovering and not showing your hand before the lock-in, because especially in the third game of a best of five, where they haven't been able to pre-plan how the series has gone, and they need to make decisions on the fly, that time can be critical. Well, we'll see what's going to be critical for this one. Team Solomid putting even more on Bjergsen's shoulders, saying, pick Nidalee, play the poke, carry us out of this one with a damage character. Not, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, she has a heal, but she's not the same kind of support character like a Karma would be. Rather, Karma's going to go to a special here on support. They still want the champion in the lineup, but they want Bjergsen on something more damaging. I feel like TSM needs to pick a very heavy disengaged jungler to go along with all of that. The Karma in Italy is going to be a lot of shielding and heals already, which means Cloud9 either has to bring healing somehow, despite already picking a support, or just bring even more hard engage. Puts them in a bit of a difficult situation here for these last two picks. Now Cloud9 still looking plenty calm. Hi. Talking about the champions. Saying, yeah, this is what we're going to play for. Here's how we're going to play it. And we'll see the last two picks. Caitlyn for Sneaky and the Twisted Fate mid lane. So Hai also going to bring this out following Link's example. To be mm -hmm. fair, TSM's only loss to, C to uh, CLG was the Twisted Fate mid lane. That's one way to close the distance on a Nidalee. They're not going to let TSM set up extended siege engagements, which actually puts a spin on this final pick for TSM. They actually need a strong team fighting jungler now because they cannot help but get engaged on by a Twisted Fate. Gotta expect the Shin Sao once again. Yeah, he's good at it, but we've just seen him being out jungled by Meteos time and again. Out gold incomed, out team fought, out ganked. Game two, he did have a pretty decent start, however. Yeah, true. But Meteos was able to recover. The objective control was great for the odd one, but that was yeah. it. That's the one thing he's done well for the team, which is the, the sort of standard for a Riggles jungler. You're more about objectives, but it's going to be a different pickup here. The Evelyn comes through for the odd one, so he could do all kinds of fun things with his early game. Get into all kinds of situations, make plenty of moves. There's a lot on the odd one here, I think. I think so too, because a lot of what happened last game was Meteos camping Dyrus and just helping out balls. It was almost a 2v1 in the top lane, which means it's a 4v3 on the rest of the map. So Odd One has to step up, Turtle has to step up, Expecial has to step up, and they have to take advantage 
if Meteos goes and helps out Balls again, they can't go even with the rest of Cloud9 like they did last time. Okay, so who's going to step up? Who's going to play actively? I know when uh, Saint talked about playing against bottom lanes, it was only the CLG bottom lane he cared about that was scary because they actually played aggressively. Mm -hmm. He said TSM just plays to farm. And if that's the case in a 3v4, that's yeah. not good. You said they have to step up and make some plays. Well, as the teams load into the game, it's a good time to check on Twitter. And you guys should submit who you think is going to win this game. Tweet us at LOL Esports and use the hashtag C9Win or TSMWin. We'll be checking in on where the vote stands throughout this game, which could be the decider for the 2014 NALCS Summer Split Championship. And you can see that TSM's aware of that. You saw the gigantic, like, like the settle yeah. in for a special. He's like, this is the game. We've got to make this work. Third champion in three games for a special there. Mm -hmm. uh, Sneaky, uh, not allowed to play Graves this time. He's actually on his third champion in three games, but he's been having yeah. a really good series so far. He has. He's been having a great season. This has really been Sneaky stepping up. He's gotten better and better the longer he's been in the LCS. He's really trying to solidify himself as the top, if not one of the top, 80 carries in North America. A 3-0 against TSM would go a long way in that argument. Yeah, and I'm impressed by Cloud9 in general. Like, uh, even though I think Sneaky may very well be the top 80 carry in North America, like... He's not winning the All-Star votes. He's not winning the popularity contest yet. The fact that Cloud9 has come out and continue to gain supporters here. Every time the TSM chant comes out, the C9 chant follows right after. These guys have been getting their following together, and it is performances like these. It's the new champions coming out, the new play styles, the, the crushing victories even. Mm -hmm. They build their following this way. And they're also very good at adapting to the game. Cloud9 is very comfortable on this patch. Seeing triple heal from them throughout. This time, they're on the blue side once again. They have been comfortable laning against TSM straight up this entire time, something that I did not expect coming into this series. Even more so, I didn't expect them to beat TSM twice in a row if they opted into those lanes. So Cloud9 is showing how they can play almost any style and still come out on top. It's incredibly impressive by these guys. Even with new champs coming in, they can opt into bad lane matchups, still persevere. Their mid and late game decision making just always so strong for these guys. So the battle lines are drawn, and I do want to know where the movements end up being. We haven't seen any lane swaps at all in this final series. It's interesting how we usually see five warding totems on both sides, but in this game in particular, Lemon Nation has went for a sweeper. A lot of that just has to do with the odd one being a stealth jungler, that extra ward really wouldn't do them much. They're going to use that one warding totem to get some brush control in the laning phase. But outside of that, they're just going to try and deny TSM more vision, since they can't get vision on the odd one anyway. Stand uh, nine. Absolutely, they're going to start in their throw. own buff, though. Same for TSM there. The top lane is going to be helping the jungler's balls with the recall. Helps Beatus get some damage down, but then he's going to grab an extra couple of potions and peace out. Dyrus, the exact same move. They're going to get to the lanes, and they'll be safe. Teleports, of course, are used on the turrets. Even if you miss a couple of minions of XP, it's worth it overall. Yeah, they needed the insurance early on in the game. And this bottom lane is going to be incredibly interesting to watch. The level one power of Karma is immense, and it's going to be about whether TSM can push Cloud9 in early to try and get an edge on this one. Otherwise, Caitlyn would be able to outrange Graves and beat them up, unless Graves and Karma can shove them in faster to neutralize the lane matchup. See, these guys are trying. They're, they're throwing attacks back and forth, and C9, uh, nor TSM really taking any time between their auto attacks. Level 2 does come first. Wild Hunter jumps in. There's the root in towards Sneaky. Good damage comes through the burst. The summoner heal forced out of Sneaky. TSM, they're showing aggressive. Cloud9 got trapped in a losing level 2 trade and did not hit level 2 in time. Therefore, they had to bail out at the last moment and had to burn that one summoner spell. They're now in a little bit of recovery mode. Health potion burned on their side, as well as the Summoner spell. Nick Special is oh, taking a big chunk of damage down on the bottom lane. He is out of potions. He might have to leave this lane before too long. High and Bjergsen battling. Level three on each. Wild Turtle doing his best to stay alive. You're seeing Sneaky also out of potions, doing his best to sustain. AD carries very rarely run lifesteal now. This could be a semi-permanent health loss. He'll slowly get his health back up in these. Caitlyn as well benefits off life still even more so. Meteos through a ward. Gonna give them a little bit of breathing room in the lane. If nothing else. 
All right, so safety for now. Ooh. Small gold lead overall TSM. Of course, that top lane will undoubtedly go Dyrus's way for quite some time until Interference shows up. Yeah. They have to take the hits early on in that lane if they're opting into this matchup. It just shows the confidence they have in their bottom lane and their mid lane to kind of accept their fate here, knowing that Balls has to turtle against Renekton early. And so here's the push in. Balls. Gonna last it under turret. Jack to the Doran's Blade has pretty good AD, and there's no dive coming in. Dyrus kind of looks like he has an Evelyn there. Yeah. But Balls doesn't flinch. Balls, very good overall. Just game sense. One of these things. He's played so many times against Dyrus and consistently comes out on top. Good guesswork there by him. So there's the push in. The mid lane actually getting sieged out a bit. Medios helping with that one. High is gonna recall after about six waves. See what he picks up for himself. He is going to be backing off. Bjergsen, of course, on Nidalee. Actually winning the minion score, mm. interestingly enough. Getting pushed into the turret, but last hitting so successfully. But he's yeah. not able to recall on this time. Something we've been touching on a bit more lately is mid laner is CS scores at 10 minutes into the game. In this series in particular, Bjergsen's actually averaging 82 CS at 10 minutes, whereas High is averaging 66. That, of course, has been two Karma games where he's supposed to win it lane, but as far as starting NALCS mid laners, High's at the bottom of the pack from that because he wins the game in other ways. He roams around a lot, he buys more wards than anyone else in the mid lane, site wards, and he just accepts those lane CS discrepancies because he makes up for it in other ways. Yeah, he gives first blood to balls in the top lane. Like, that's worth 20 CS to me, like 100% of the time. <laughs> exactly. On balls, I'm like, yes please, High, keep doing that one. Nice spell shield, black shield rather. Keep sneaky safe. You know, there's an anecdote about Lemonation. On his Morgana, he runs gold per 10 seals. So he's got to be playing very passively early on in the game. Yeah. If that's the case. They got pushed in a little bit. That's one of the reasons they may just farm that lane, as you were saying earlier. Deep Pink Ward does not get spotted by the odd one. That's actually a very critical Pink Ward miss, because that'll give a lot of scouting information to High later on. So they know he's on the top side of the map, and it's going to let C9's bottom lane play a bit more aggressively for the next 20 seconds. So they see him once again. The odd one is looking towards the mid lane right here. Didn't pass any wards, but he's going back up towards his jungle. Might not have re-stealthed in time, actually. He did pop the W to get around the map. High missing a silly CS, but that's okay. It's only one. Threat comes in. To touch back on the warding game between High and Medios. It was a trend in the regular season as well in the playoff games. As far as site wards purchased by mid laners, High purchased 264 whereas Bjergsen purchased 88 in his 22 games. So more than double per game for High. And it's giving Cloud9 map control. It happens in this series as well. They were finding the picks because they generally knew where TSM was and TSM was getting caught off guard. TSM's trying to neutralize that in this game. Evelyn obviously cannot be seen by the site wards and it's all about pink ward playing. So that number is going to get skewed a little bit in this game. But it's still an important change. They're called stealth wards now. It's true. <laughs> I think Pink Wards are still Vision Wards. Correct. They still give Sight. But yeah, Sight and Vision, I realize, are you know not exactly ideal names for conflicting items. Mm -hmm. It's like an Infinity Edge or a Forever Green Edge. Wards. Green Wards. Yeah, that's what I did. Green Wards and Pink Wards, guys. That was the real names. It's like that Yellow Summoner spell, Flash. Mm. A little bit harder to say, though. Still just farming out these lanes as well. High, oh, aggressively high. going for some CS. Yeah, I think a lot of damage for this one's got to pop the summoner heal Bjergsen. Yeah. Javelin, ooh, MVP minion keeps high in a safe place. Yeah, he was trying to shove out the lane a little bit, and Bjergsen aggressed him at just the right moment. So a little bit of a mistake there by high, trying to red card all those CS. He knew he was going back to shop anyway, just didn't want to burn his heal. Well, he did, though. It's going to be Bjergsen able to stay in the lane, but that's the second recall now for high. First time he went double Doran's ring plus boots, now he's grabbing a fiendish codex. Last time we saw this Twisted Fate, it was Link, and it was a Morella Namicon rush. I want to see what this nice ends up building into. Yeah, it's special taking some very serious damage. You see, Lemonation very rarely gets counterattacked in these. Playing completely safe. Armor marks, by the way. Mm. So he's reasonably durable, but... So this game is playing out fairly similar to games one and two. However, if we were actually tracking the early games, Cloud9's better off in this game three than they were in game two. Balls is actually stuck with Dyrus even more, so he's only down 12 CS. And the bottom lane is doing fairly well pushing for Cloud9. Oh, High and Bjergsen again in the battle, but blue buff, Nidalee. Such good sustain there. I don't think High's harass will do much. Good dodge. 
Keeps him safe. Cycling around the cards, gonna make sure to last hit what he can. Medios making the flank here. Bjergsen waits around. Mm. No, good javelin. Does not get dodged, but the cocoon's gonna land. It's only one second stun though. Bjergsen backs out. Another javelin hits oh. Medios. He's got a 300. He's got to leave. Two for two on Bjergsen. He makes that gank a big folly right there, and it means he can fully aggress onto high, starting to get a lot of that mid lane pressure. How is the rest of TSM going to capitalize on this? Uh -oh. Because Bjergsen goes. Wow, forces a flash away. Bjergsen starting to really press his advantage here in this lane, forcing high back a third time now in mm -hmm. nine minutes. Heal was already burned. Now he gets the flash. Bjergsen still has a heal for himself. He's forcing a lot of pressure just on his own, making it much more difficult for Medios to help out in the top lane, which means it's now Dyrus who needs to become the victor. And it's a 21 minion lead for Dyrus here. He's actually doing a great job. He's pushing balls around. Yeah. Watch that fight again. Just another watch by this one. It's a nice move by Hyde to get the gold card in, but then split second flashing. Bjergsen tries to jump in and flash for the execute. He actually misses his swipe because Hyde flashed away before that one could go off. But because he pushed him back so heavily, he roams top. Dyrus now taking some turret damage. It's gonna be top lane turret going down with this one. Most likely it's getting very low. Will they take it out? I'm gonna say with yes, TSM are gonna get the first turret, but look at this Cloud9. They rotate back to the mid lane. Medios gonna secure this one with the team, making it yeah. equal. This could be a massive take for Cloud9. As far as the CS at 10 marks we're talking about, there was actually 89 from Bjergsen in this game, which is seven higher than his average within the first two games, and 23 higher than his, or not, just a huge amount higher than his regular season record. Yeah. For that. Mid 70s is normal, right? Yeah, mid 70s is normal for him. Because of all the trading, especially against Hai, someone who's very aggressive in the mid lane, He's just playing out of his mind so far in the laning phase on Nidalee. Yeah, but his absolutely. turret goes down. Oh! From top. Special secures his own team's white camp. One of four CS for the player, but significant gold income there. Sight stone done. Interestingly, the mid turret, though, gets answered right away. So look at this. Turret's falling down all over the place. Two for two right now on the map. Bottom lane last one. Mid traded. And TSM got the top lane. Very interesting contrast of turrets, but it means the gold is completely even. The question now is what that does to the rest of the game. Twisted Fate and Nidalee can both cover a lot of ground. Twisted Fate with his ultimate and Nidalee, of course, just pouncing around. It's going to be about who can get the big ganks off now. High tries first. He gets the stun. Gets some good damage. The trap's not going to come down in time. Wild Turtle walks away with 600 health. Make that 200 health. Still has heal. Special still has an exhaust if he gets back on. He really just needs to try and lifesteal up a little bit. No Vamp Scepter, but does have that Doran's Blade. Well, Cloud9, they finish the recalls in the jungler and support. Maybe they make their way down to Dragon in time. TSM just recalling their duo lane away. So this is a small temporary period where Cloud9 will have a numbers lead in the bottom side if they want to go hardcore for the Dragon. Got to be careful that Dyrus has teleport there. Looks like Cloud9 not really looking that aggressive for it. No, and I think you can look at High's items at this point in the game, and he is a non-factor if they were to start doing team fights right now. No magic pen, he looks like he's rushing the Lich Bane. That's that's Merlin Omicron. Oh, Merlin that's, that's the... You're right, you're right. Yeah. We don't see that item much. But that's the uh, CDR Mana Regen item. The Forbidden Idol. Yes. Say. New item in the 4.5 patch. Again, comes in from behind from Meteos, gets a stun. Ooh, a lot of backup. Decent damage, but the teleport from Dyrus will force Meteos back. He doesn't cancel it, though. So Dyrus... Shows up to clear some waves, and now he's on the correct side of the map for Dragon. Right, and Balls has no teleport down in the other lane. This is all about TSM forcing the Dragon. They should go immediately, because Balls has no way of coming back for this one, and he's going to try and push up that top lane. TSM would love to be able to get the Dragon and prevent that turret from falling. Balls has it in 35 seconds. That's the teleport timer for him, but TSM going to kill that way too fast. No contest there. The smite comes through, and the odd one claims the Dragon. So. No champion kills, but many turrets have fallen. The dragon as well, and it means TSM are up 300 gold. That's heavily based off the mid lane control that Bjergsen has been able to get from high. Very impressive performance by him. They're really holding this blue buff a lot because they're giving him the blue buff, trying to channel as much farm and power onto Bjergsen as possible, as per the TSM strategy. He is the basically tied with Dyrus for highest CS in the game. Both mm -hmm. those two are definitely winning their lane matchups. They've stepped up so far in this game, and we haven't yet seen that Meteos camp. Dyrus hasn't gone 1-4 so far in the game. There's been no roams from high. He went bottom lane, got him a turret, but no kills yet. Lulif gonna go over, high grabs that at the best time in the game. Bjergsen wanted to try and stop this one, does get one of the minions. Yeah. 
Loses Get that ward for it. Here. 10 gold goes over the way of Meteos. It's worth more than that little monster right there, so, you know, worth it. Heavy amount of sweepers coming out very early from Cloud9. Trying to deny that TSM vision, as well as not needing the warding totems because the Evelyn. Ooh, the sidestep from Elimination, but Bjergsen's coming down. Javelin will hit him. Half HP, empowered Q, flashed by Elimination. Bjergsen, though, not going to chase down. Yeah, but he might continue this one. They know they have isolated the AD carry, which meant Sneaky had to bail out. Ah, so they don't overcommit for that one at all. Wild Turtle, though, stuck clearing away this bottom lane. Interestingly for him, he went Berserker's Grease to the completed Bloodthirster of Sneaky. So there's a bit of an item disparity here with the BT stacks, meaning something for the next few minutes of this game, until Wild Turtle can buy and then get yeah. 30 CS. Getting the Bloodthirster first is so critical because of the stacking mechanisms on this one, but... TSM's going to try and shut that one down. They have a lot of map pressure bottom, even with the Twist of Fate. He he was very fortunate to know where everyone is with that Twist of Fate ultimate. Otherwise, that would have been into a four-man gank. Surprise, the odd one. Great timing by High on that Twist of Fate ultimate. So everybody's safe here, but Balls is getting free farm in the top lane. He is down 30 minions right now under Dyrus. Dyrus has, again, done a great job of that, getting the turret plus getting the minion lead, but it's only a matter of time until Balls is more effective on the map. Elimination finds a binding, gets a bit of damage down. Cocoon's gonna go through as well, but TSM, they've got too many people here. It's a four versus three on this side of the map. Oh. C9 force back, great javelin lands as well. Yeah, they can't just take these spears again and again. They need to make moves elsewhere on the map, which is exactly what Cloud9 is trying to do, high pushing strongly up that mid lane, trying to punish the time that Bjergsen has spent down here spearing them. And Darius makes his way back to the top lane, but no one is stopping high in the mid lane. Actually, just moves back around, though. He's not even trying to hit the turret because Bjergsen's showing up. Well, he wants to kill him. Well, gold card locked. Dodges the javelin. Dodges the trap as well. Bjergsen not done with this yet, though. Good dodges again. High gets out. Really smart play there by High. Doing sidesteps while he's looking to lock in his gold cards. And not taking a single point of damage from Bjergsen. That definitely some excellent play right there. Some nice wave clear. I would have died there. A lot of people would have. Yeah. So Elimination going to help get his team control both teams. Look at this. Double green wards. Got the name right. There in the blue side jungle of TSM. Pink ward removed away. Cloud9 getting rid of some more vision. But you got to be careful. That golem is going to respawn in about a minute and a half. And Cloud9, they've got better vision on that area. Yeah, and the gold remaining close. This is definitely the closest of three games we've played thus far. TSM wanted to set up some nice sieges with Bjergsen later, but Balls is actually farming up pretty well. He does have that Blade of the Ruined King this time before Dyrus has built his Sunfire Cape without the help of Meteos' ganks in the top lane, so that is a positive. The negatives, however, is that High has been pushed around a fair bit by Bjergsen in the mid lane. And TSM hold on to a 400 gold lead for all their effort there. Now keep in mind, Twisted Fate's passive is to get basically free gold by last hitting. Right, that's one of the reasons the gold appears much closer. It's about because of all 500 gold, gold worth. But that goes to show you how strong Bjergsen is right now. He even has a blue elixir. Look how he's trying to take advantage of this spike in power right now with the Athenes and the Sorcerer's Shoes. He's going to consume that blue elixir so he has it for the dragon, which is exactly. coming up in a minute and 20. Well, you're seeing that C9 are afraid to fight this, right? Renekton's still more powerful than the Jax. Bjergsen's obviously outperforming high right now in the fights. The AD carries fairly equal out of themselves. You see Dyrus pushing balls back. Jax has to be careful in this one. High, by the way, at 560 gold from the passive, so it'd be an even bigger lead. Oof. More damage comes through. Full retreat now from balls. You gotta track Dyrus' Tiamat. He's very good at using that in trades. This is why Renekton's built Tiamat. It's because it cancels the long wind-up after his W. So he'll hit him, use his W, and then Tiamat. And then he can just keep swinging at full speed without getting animation locked in any of his moves. Dyrus is very good at that combo. You key right after. You see a whole bunch of burst down where they're stunned. It's all kinds of difficult to deal with. Sneaky putting some damage down. Knows the range of Dyrus. And there's no follow-up for a flash stun, so he's safe. Lemon needs a trap real quick. Gets revealed, but doesn't care. Dragon's now in 24 seconds. TSM actually get the movement to the bottom lane. That's very successful for them, and they get this 1,000 gold lead now for Team Solo Mid. The mid lane Twisted Fate has not done anything yet with High. Yeah. He's gotten one teleport off that forced a couple summoners out of Wild Turtle. That TSM has definitely taken map control 
amongst all of this. And because I feel like the fear of spears and the pink ward battle that TSM has been winning in this dragon pit, this could actually be an uncontested dragon without losing anything. A first for TSM in this series. And it's going to be going down rather quickly. Sneaky will try for the Q. Little early. Good smite there by the Odwin. Claims it. But C9, I mean, I guess they're just waiting on balls then. Like, they're really... They're taking what they advantage want they to can, gank right now any. in the top lane. This is their counterplay. They're trying to go hard on a Darius inside the turret. All right, he's been stunned up. There's a leap strike by as well, but he's taking good damage back on towards balls. Goes towards the left. Another gold card comes through the flash oh, away. Cards. He keeps him safe. Yeah, you're right, but Darius has nowhere to go, and High finds the first blood finally. They committed three, though, and TSM had never backed after the dragon. They can get a lot with his attack speed from Nidalee and the Graves. All right, tier two turret going to be going down for this one. Can they get more of the recalls? from Lemonation and High will try to keep them safe. Bjergsen acting to recall for himself, so no more of a push because C9 actually pushed mid with this one. Again, the out rotation. These guys are just trading objectives for objectives. That's something Cloud9 has done so much. TSM went for the Dragon. It was uncontested. It felt like they weren't going to lose anything, but then they end up losing Dyrus and two turrets. Wow, exceptional play. So an extra outer turret and an extra champion kill was the trade for C9. They're going to back out of this one. The gold back to equal, actually. Oh, That's how you know it was a good a trade. Stun. Yes! Wow, so it does get stunned up by a rank 4 cocoon. He summoner heals. He dashes away. The flash is there if he needs it. He doesn't, though. Bruce and heals me gets away. Still a nice play there by Cloud9 invading the jungle. The gold has been equalized in this game. Still only one kill, but that's just because these teams are playing patient and very tactically. Played a lot of lanes against each other. And not letting each other get into kill range the majority of the time. Yeah, always successful retreats as well. And the thing is also, is despite all this and all the threats and everything else, the minion kills still rather high. Yeah. Everyone's sitting around 170, 180 Can the two minute mark. 20 minute mark, yeah. And that was really good as well. High left one of the small ones up and mm -hmm. positioned himself right on the other side of it. That was really good. I gotta say that's an intentional as well. Yeah. Little against a lot of Nidalee in his day. High, a very smart player, first and foremost. So, Cloud9. Still actually a bit on the defensive. It's still TSM who looks to kind of push Ooh. the favor. Top lane, all five. Balls on the wrong side of the map, and here they go. Tier 2 turret dying yeah. rather fast. They just get this one because they took control of the blue buff of Cloud9. There was no way Cloud9 was checking that area. And they used the move speed of Karma to go and get themselves another turret. Five turrets to four now. Very but, well played. And they get to the other side to defend this Jax. There is a teleport for Dyrus. Ball's going to start the damage. Dyrus will walk his way to the lane. And I don't think this will die too very quickly, but Ball's now level 13. He's actually still minus a level to Dyrus. That is something that's been held well for TSM, but here comes Sneaky, here comes the rest of C9 a little bit. They're just ignoring Dyrus right now, this turret going down rather fast. Sneaky putting some damage through, and there Dyrus it goes. Be careful. The TP in from Twisted Fate. Dyrus, actually, he's gonna stun him up nice and late, and there goes the kill. Balls claims it. That is the second game in a row that Dyrus has died, underestimating the attack speed and the power of a Jax on a turret. He should have abandoned that turret when he realized he did not have the help, and he forgot the Twisted Fate could come in from anywhere to finish him off. So that's now two kills, the only two kills. Ganks on yep. Dyrus. I mean, he tried to go really hard on a Sneaky right here, but you can see, because they had a focus on the turret, they were able to stun him as soon as he came through. High with the gold card locked. Twisted Fate Puffs actually helped there. He now can hold it for six seconds, making it a little bit easier and forgiving to come in there. With the stuns after TP, his High locks it perfectly, gets the stun, and picks up the second kill of the game for Cloud9. Absolutely beautiful play on this one. So High now gets to be a split pusher if he wants to. I mean, the main one is Balls, but High goes around the map. He's got great cooldown reduction. Right, early Morella and Namakon wearing a blue buff as well. This is one of the first TF builds I see that actually has CDR on it. Yeah, well, this is very similar to the Link build that he played against TSM because it's incredibly strong against the triple heal, two summoner heals, and the Nidalee that come in from TSM. As long as he gets on the right targets, he prevents those guys from being able to save them. So now TSM playing for the first time in this game, catch up. They're down 700 gold there. Starting to lose a bit of control. The kills from C9 are very effective. Sheen now done. Phage started for balls. He's starting to get himself back to the part where he can actually 1v1 Dyrus. And as levels come in, that'll keep getting better for the man. Blue buffs not being stolen away yet, though. Looks like that will be Bjergsen's. Again, a lot is on him. 210 minions. He's still got 
the good individual marks, but DSM just can't find any kills yet. What a fascinating game this is. Cloud9 with no sustain having to deal with this blue buff Nidalee who has had lane control the entire time. They're trying to outsmart their way to this victory because TSM has a very strong Bjergsen in the mid lane doing everything he can really. Great farm on all of the lanes for TSM, yet still 900 gold down and even in turrets. We've had 10 turret kills in this game and only two player kills. It is all about how they move around the map, cut each other off from turret defenses, and eventually catch each other for kills. There's no big team fights as of yet. <sighs> now keep in mind, that is pre-Death Cap Bjergsen. He's yeah. about 200 to 150 gold away from Death Cap combined. He's sitting at six, 700 gold on his inventory, so. 640 gold right now, just 200 gold, it. exactly. So, that's gonna be the thing. That's the TSM. Now, unfortunately for them, Dragon's in 15 seconds. He will not have Death Cap for the Dragon fight unless it gets delayed here. Of course, C9 can't know that, but there is that chance that they get in the fight that they want before Bjergsen really spikes up. High already has Zonias, so it's a it's a better lineup for C9 right now. I think Balls also might be the point where he can be okay fighting Dyrus one on one. Good binding on Bjergsen heals himself. Does have the blue buff. TSM already starting this one up. Elimination is around. Could be a collapse. This is one of those times where Cloud9 tries to take another advantage. They're just trying to come right into the Dragon Pit here. Twit, TFL comes out. Where's the fight? He's going to go right in on top of the Dragon. There comes Balls and Dyrus into the back line. Going to all collapse back down towards Dyrus. Elimination gets out, gets the stun as well. Dyrus still locked up. He will fall. The escape comes in. Now the odd one forced to run away, but he's going to go down. Double kill for Sneaky. And here comes the chase. Wild Turtle is going to get well away from this fight. Another 2-0 Cloud9. What a clean engage there by the Cloud9 team. They have had a very big risk of getting s just surrounded by the TSM team, but they didn't let the Spears poke them down. They get two more kills and the Dragon. What a big move in the overall game there for Cloud9. And you gotta wonder how many other teams would have said, oh, they got there first, it's low, and just not even gone for it. Many they teams. dove in. The Black Shield Twisted Fate ulti guaranteed no one would stop him or stun him on the way into the Dragon Pit to force away the members. They focused down. Everyone turned back onto Dyrus. Balls turned around to make yeah. sure they hit people down. I mean, C9, we talked about their team fighting, but there's a great example right there. Forcing their way in, making it work. It means 26 minutes into the game, they're starting to assume control a little bit. Understanding the power spikes in the game here, knowing that they had a lot of items completed right before that. There was a Blade of the Ruined King, they had the Phantom Dancer and Bloodthirster completed on a Sneaky. The Zhonya's on high, so even when he could teleport in, he had impunity. Couldn't get immediately stuck, struck down. Just a very well-played game so far from both teams, but a little bit more so for Cloud9. Yeah, and that's resulted in a six and a half thousand, or sorry, three and a half thousand gold lead for these guys. Looking at the three zero, looking at keeping their perfect playoff record alive. Their second straight North American Championship, the trip to All Stars Paris. Game three, that could be it for Cloud9. TSM, they need the giant comeback. They've yeah. got to find some way back in. Honestly, like. The rotations have been good from TSM. They've found good turret pushes, mm -hmm. but they've not found picks. They've We've yet to see Bjergsen kill someone by himself with the javelins. This is somewhat reminiscent of game one where TSM just isn't able to find kills and Cloud9 is able to sneak a few here and there. Not enough finishing power on the TSM team and now Cloud9 is playing with a lot of confidence. And you're seeing them start to control the map. Falls is well past, like, well, not anymore, but he was like past the death of that second turret out there, shoving the lane in, knowing he was safe. The rest of the team had eyes on TSM's lineup. Cloud9 takes some time to back off for now. Three completed items now for High. He's got Void Staff done. Three completed items for Sneaky as well. You're seeing kind of down the line these slight advantages for each of the members. It's really crazy to think as well how much Cloud9 has historically dominated TSM and how it is continuing here in the finals despite how great TSM has looked throughout the season. They're 12-1 and against TSM Lifetime. If they win this one, it will be 13-1. and In this series alone, I know we always talk about the KDAs of Medios and High and how little they die, but Medios and High haven't died this series, not a single time, which is incredible when they're leaning up against the MVP of the NALCS in Bjergsen. If they could keep that streak up, they're definitely going to lock down the title in this game. Midos eats a trap, doesn't even care. It wasn't even a cupcake. It's a crappy trap. Still eats it. Midos doesn't care. Spiders, omnivores. Moves his way over to the bottom side of the map. Ball's already setting up the minion wave for this one. 
Level 14s and 15s for most of these guys. Blue buff now going to be under control. C9 definitely the confident ones in this one. And TSM's not getting in positions where Bjergsen can go to work with his spears. Cloud9 is not necessarily trying to set up turret sieges, and they're not putting themselves in positions to be sieged. That's what TSM needs to have now that he finally has that death cap. You know, we talked about... Oh, hold on. This... Okay, he's all right. <clears throat> you know, we talked about C9 being confident. Lemonation just swept that ward with no coverage at all. I feel like C9 are almost getting slightly overconfident. They didn't see any of TSM. They may well they be. They sat there hitting it. They may well be, but they also have a very good read on TSM. Knowing that this is the third game in the series. Lemonation is getting rather bold with his plays right here, though. TF in one lane, Jax in the other. They could theoretically collapse for 5v5, but the collapse wouldn't be immediate. There's a teleport, there's a twist to fade off, and they're trying for a catch! They're gonna get their damage on the special. Cocoon's gonna land as well. Jax also in. Kill picked up 5-0. Well, there's our answer why Lemonation was playing so aggressive, because they were waiting to pounce. He was hoping to catch a Dark Binding. They didn't even need it until after the stun. Sneaky in the mid lane, pushing up with the rest of Cloud9. Absolutely great play, and now Bjergsen's on the wrong side of this. He's on the back side, looking for Javelins in toward the Squishies. Balls also eats the Bushwhack. They're going to move in now towards the middle inhibitor turret. Cloud9 has to be very careful here not to take any spears from Nidalee while they're sieging this, especially the Squishies in the back, because Bjergsen is behind them. Ooh. There's one. Well, high, very low on health. Puts the poke down while Turtle dropped dangerously low. Another Javelin onto Sneaky. That's a big one. Balls will be taking this one out high. Great sidestep. That would have killed him. But even better positioning from Bjergsen, knowing if he came in from the back, he would be able to defend that inhibitor turret. If he was in the front, the minions would have blocked it, the tanks could have blocked it. But he got it to squish. He's one on the high, one on the sneaky, repelling that push. So blue elixir Bjergsen, no blue buff. Oh, there's the on the Dyrus gold card. It's going to be everything, but there's the Mikhail's special, keeps him alive. Dyrus pops the ulti and flash to get out, but the solo kill from Balls on the side. He trades his life, but this could be the opening for Cloud9. A red buff Sneaky is slowing down Dyrus, who does not have flash. While Thunder comes to join in, Lemonation, the flash engaged. The black shield is on. A massive stun comes through. A special low on health. Heals himself up. Odwin chases down Sneaky, won't so get the low. kill. Wild Turtle goes down to Meteos. A special goes down as well. The repel in the air. A three for zero on this engage. And Meteos and High are still unkilled in this series, despite taking down four members of TSM, especially with the kill on the Bjergsen. They can shut down this middle lane now. They've got 14 seconds of this three versus one right there. Dyrus not likely to make his way in. Middle inhibitor now under fire. High helping to lead the team. He's the shot caller primarily. And he's making it happen. What an impressive performance so far by Cloud9 in this series. They win the first game by a wide margin. And check out this catch by Balls. He just tanks the spear, but because of the immense damage and the Blade of the Ruin King active, he just ruins Bjergsen. And all the while, Cloud9 had already distracted the rest of TSM, so there was no peel for him. At this point, it is just execution from Cloud9 coming in from all angles. They don't have the highest amount of damage. That's why the map control and starting the fights with an advantage is so key. No Bjergsen means little heals. They have Morellanomicon to stop the summoner heals as well from high. Then Zonis at just the right time. The repel from Meteos at just the right time. They clean up the fight, they get the mid turret, and they secure the bear. Wow, impressive now, 32 minutes in. Z9 doing pretty much everything right, and they might just get a catch here. Ball spots TSM. There's a TF ulti. Bjergsen's he's gonna get stunned. He's gonna get stunned wow. again, and down he goes. Cloud9 finds the pick, and they're gonna find Dragon. It's really all about withstanding Bjergsen's laning phase and then being better as a team. As far as Cloud9's victories here, High has not let himself get killed by Bjergsen. He has given small advantages to him when he needs to, and then he has punished him when Bjergsen is trying to make too many plays. 10 to 1 now in kills, and a resounding advantage for Cloud9. Here we go, Cloud9 making their way up the bottom side of the map. Mid inhibitor is already gone. 18 seconds until TSM have their all-star, their MVP back. Bottom lane turret now under siege. Balls They're just gonna go. Binding onto Dyrus, but there's some damage coming in from Expecial. They don't even care. He just tanks the turret down. Sneak is going to join the team. Wild Turret actually pushing the top lane by himself, so it's actually Gonna be a five versus four even still. There comes the recall, but this turret's taking damage. Turtle still not back in. Turret number one is gone. Dyrus there gets another bind onto him. High finds his stun cocoon there as well. Still putting the damage down. C9, wait for another wave. Should be rather bold if they're trying to end the game here. They do have two waves of super minions approaching. 
This is a healthy TSM team trying to get them. They do have Baron. If they get a clean engage, I could see them going for it, but it is rather risky, and Cloud9 doesn't need to do it right now. Yeah, Sneaky's going to be safe. All of C9 doing a great job of dodging the Javelins and backing out. They still hold the Baron buff for more than two minutes here. They could recall, shop, and either siege down mid with supers or get the top inhibitor. I want to know how secure they want the game, but they're ahead 12,000 gold. Any of those pushes will work. Yeah, most likely from the camp of Cloud9, they're going to start the push up the top lane since the minion wave is pushed in that side. And if they catch TSM looking and trying to defend one of the other turrets, they would initiate immediately. But they are very knowledgeable of where TSM has to go. They know TSM needs to put multiple resources into defending those two inhibitor turrets. Sneaky's actually trying to farm up enough for an Infinity Edge right now. It would give him another power spike. Obviously, the death cap was just completed by High, putting him in an immaculate amount of ability power, 632. That's a rather large number. Sneaky, just enough for IE. 1375 from where he's at. He's going to wait for Ambient Gold, and there we go. That's the last major power spike for an AD carry. Four big offensive items, not counting boots. And C9 does look for the top lane. Can TSM make any more plays? Or do they have a Rider's Block? Can they make this stop? Cloud9 will end the game on this push. Well, whatever it is, there's some type of block for TSM against Cloud9 because they just can't seem to beat these guys. Ever since they've made it into the LCS, Cloud9 just can't seem to lose in the playoffs. Still undefeated, well on their way to their second straight split championship here in North America. Pushing down go. the top tour with two downed inhibitors and a Baron buff. There goes tier two. Baron buff, 45 more seconds. Wild Turtle wants to wave there, takes a Kaelin ult. He's gonna get slowed down a little bit as well by Twin Shadows. Summon Hill keeps him safe. Balls holding down the mid lane. Super is holding Dyrus' attention. That inhib's gonna fall. Top inhib turret's gone. Balls this gonna be rejoin. He's trying to come in from the side. Here we go. No stuns come in from the ulti from Morgana, but there's the battle, especially on the back line. Wild Turtle gonna be locked up. Two kills. Make that four kills. Make that almost everyone going down. Cloud9 gonna end the series 3-0. They're gonna take down the Nexus, and they're the North American champions. Wow. To one. They won the first game 18 to 1. And their overall kill death in this series is ridiculous. They only died six times this entire series. Six deaths total in a best of five against Team Solo Mid. These will be these teams, these players putting in everything out there. But Cloud9, I gotta say, representing North America at the All-Star Invitational in Paris. Obviously the best team for the job here. Cloud9. The best team in North America once again, showered in confetti here, and a dominant victory once again. The number one seed in the regular season. They came into the playoffs on a 13-game winning streak. If you include these playoffs, they've now won 18 in a row against top-flight competition here. That has to feel good. They're gonna have even 